with your host, Andy Graham, Brett Pritchard, Randy Lee, War Eagle. Hello again, everyone, and good Monday afternoon. Welcome into this another edition of the Auburn Blitz. I am Andy Graham alongside Jeremy Jeffcoat. We'll be with you for the next hour, taking your comments, taking your phone calls, talking about everything going on in the world of Auburn athletics. So again, we appreciate all of you out there being with us, whether that be on television, on WOTM, uh, statewide, across the great state of Alabama on Spectrum Cable or WAXC TV right here in Alexander City and Lake Martin area. You can tune us in on 105.1 The Lake as well on the radio dial or just dial us up on the Sports Blitz Facebook page. That's Sports with a Z. And comment away. We'd love to get uh, your feedback on any of the things that we talk about. Everything going on in the world of sports. Of course, there is a lot going on right now. Uh, Auburn's set to begin practice August 5th. That's Thursday. Can you believe it? Uh, college football practice beginning this week. And then hopefully, uh, you know, if everything goes to plan, we will have uh, college football. We will have uh, full stadiums. I don't know. Things are, you know. A little fluid suddenly. It's, it, yeah. yeah. It's a fluid situation, but uh, we will see what happens. We've got a month to kind of um, get the logistics of it worked out. But. Nonetheless, uh, the football team will be will begin practicing, and that will happen certainly across the SEC as well. Um, but everybody getting started about this time. So uh, it's an exciting time of year. Uh, Texas and Oklahoma officially being invited and officially accepting that invitation to join the Southeastern Conference. Yeah, I, 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 I'm excited about it. I know it's right now still 2025, but it won't be before it's all said and done. And, um, you know, we talked about this last week with Jade Crane, but, you know, my, my thought is the, the Big 12 is not going to be there in 2025. The Big 12 may not be there in 2022. So um, I think you're going to see other other teams, you know, getting invitations, accepting invitations, that sort of thing. Yeah, you know the the idea and the put out the front on the front of it that the, this deal expires, the media rights deal expires in June of 2025, and that's when they're going to leave. I think everybody's it's a, well, okay. This is something's being worked behind the scenes, and if this is all true, that you know uh, ESPN is maybe encouraging some other conferences to cherry pick from that they want that i don't think there needs out. to be any uh any uh encouragement i think as soon as word hit that texas and oklahoma were leaving uh, i think phones lit up across the big 10 in contact with people like iowa state um i think you you saw phones light up in the pac 12 contacting teams like baylor mm -hmm. um wouldn't surprise me if the acc talked to a west virginia or maybe even the big 10 talked to a west virginia um so I, I I think you're 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 going to see the big I guess it's big eight now the big big twelve which was ten and now it's yeah. eight is I think you're going to see it get numbers um, don't matter what? yeah the the you know there won't be much meat left on that bone when it's all said and done no that's for sure uh, I think we can all agree on that the big twelve as we wanted the big eight the Southwest Conference any of those things um, they they're kind of gone the way of the dodo it would seem. But we'll see what happens uh, as we move forward in these uh, negotiations and whatnot. Uh, nonetheless, no matter what happens or when it happens, Texas and Oklahoma are going to be part of the SEC. Are they the only two that are going to be added? Mm, that may be a question. I but think so. I think so. You going to settle for 16? Uh, no, no, no go after – uh, Clemson and Florida State. Hey, see, I don't, I don't see that. Now, I don't think the ACC is in that strong a position, but they do have Notre Dame for non-football sports. If Notre Dame ever did decide to join a conference, they've kind of made it clear that it would be that one. Um, so, I, you know, to me, the ACC is in a strong enough position to survive um, for now. But, you know, weird things could happen. I mean, would it – would would Clemson leave the ACC to come to the SEC? Uh, I think Florida State would, uh, but I'm not 
you know, I'm not 100% sure about Clemson. Well, I wouldn't have thought Texas and Oklahoma would, but here they are. So, I'm not putting anything past anybody. I wouldn't be surprised if Ohio State and Michigan said they wanted to come to <laughs> I, I just There is no uh, – there's no – I don't think we'll, – We'll just make the is. whole country the SEC. Well, and we'll have the North and the South and the East and the West. That's and there right. you go. Yeah. Why, why not? Uh, who's better than us? Uh, all right. So, uh, we appreciate all of you out there again being with us today. If you got any comments about – any of those, any thoughts on that, we'd love to hear them. Auburn gets a big commitment over the weekend. Four-star defensive end Caden Story. Uh, Six-foot-four, 264-pound defensive lineman from Lynette. Uh, of course, his brother Christian was the quarterback there. Led them to a state title a couple of years ago. Now he's at Alabama. Um, so um, Yeah, and Caden Story is a really good player. Very, very good oh. player. Very big uh, – Upside and a him. coach's kid, which which is important, I think, when you're building a program to have yeah. people like that. Um, Christian story, uh, Luke and I called the uh, two A championship game the year that they won it, and and he put on one of the one of the best one man shows that I've ever seen in a in a championship game. I think he had uh, nine tackles, forced fumble, and interception on defense, and he threw for a couple of hundred yards, ran for 150, and, yeah, I just yeah. – an amazing uh, – amazingly athletic family, and Caden's story is, uh, you know, uh, he, he can wind up a couple of different places along the defensive line. But you know this, Andy, in, uh, in the Southeastern Conference, it is how you build from the inside out. So uh, the lines of scrimmage on both sides are, are incredibly vital. And Auburn has done a good job defensively in that over the last decade. Offensively on the offensive line, that's where they've, they've struggled, especially at offensive tackle. So uh, now, but though, with Damari Austin, the running back, four-star running back, the uh, four-star defensive end, Caden Story, you've seen a couple of commits. It, it's starting – that's starting to look like Auburn recruiting again. People have been concerned about that, with and rightly so. Uh, Auburn ranked 80th in the country in recruiting. You don't like to see that. Uh, at any time. But this moves Auburn up to, I think, 59th uh, in the country. That's still not where you want to be. But it's only eight commitments. Uh, now, six of those have come since July 1st. So, again, you feel like Auburn maybe is starting to get on a roll. Uh, maybe some recruits are starting to say, okay, well, maybe I'll take a second look at Auburn and uh, we'll see what happens. It's different than it used forward. to be, too, because it used to be when you were a new coach coming in, you had until February to put together your first class. Yeah. Well, now with the December signing day, it's really kind of a your, – your first class is your second class. You know what I mean? And so 80% of people are signing in December. Yeah, so yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. So you really can't put a class together there. It's your first class is your second. What used to be your first class is now your second class. Right. And so it's kind of so, – but at least you got a year to build it, you know, yeah. so – uh, so, Auburn, uh, again, moving up now. Uh, to put that in perspective, uh, the next closest, I think, Auburn has eight commitments. Okay, so everybody else in the SEC, and, of course, the top echelon that are in the top ten uh, have anywhere from 14 to, I think I saw one, uh, who at Penn State, I think, is up there because they've got 20, maybe over 20 or 20 over 20 uh, commitments right now. So, that's put them – um, near the top, but as teams, more and more teams start to fill out their class full of 20, 25 players, then you're going to see that the, the numbers change. But uh, the next close, I think Ole Miss has got 10 commitments, and they're just ahead of Auburn in the 50s as well. So uh, uh, Auburn, once they start to put this class together and you actually get uh, bodies, the body count up, um, this class is going to rise in the rankings, and it's just a matter of where it ends up, I think, is the only question. Uh, but Caden Story, uh, as, as J.J. said, a big time uh, from a big-time athletic family, and um, he, he has uh, had a, a tremendous year uh, last year for Lynette, uh, looking to have another big year this year as well. So um, 66 tackles, 21, and a half, 21 tackles for loss, 18 sacks, 31 quarterback pressures, and two forced fumbles. Uh, that's, that's what you want to see from a guy. Putting pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, he's that. He's not your typical big high school guy, right? Who just sort of powers over everybody. Yeah. He's got he's got quick feet, quick first step, and um, and if if his frame can handle two eighty five, two ninety, 
He may move inside. He may move inside, and and which you know, if you can handle that kind of weight, that opens you up at the next level too to either play that three four end or the four three tackle. You know, you kind of become a little more versatile that way. No doubt, um, and that's what you uh, you know you've seen in the last couple of years in Kevin Steele uh, with guys. So. Uh, that that is de- definitely what you want to do as a college athlete. You want to make yourself uh, the most versatile you can to to go to the NFL. Um, we will uh, continue on um, five big questions. These are just five questions I came up with uh, this morning. I think they as we enter practice, as we enter this August fifth beginning date, um, these are five questions I have that uh, I think are going to have to be answered uh, if Auburn is going to make a move uh, this year to be better than fifth in the West, which is what they are predicted to be. Uh, J.J. and I will talk a little Braves. Uh, It's kind of a big – it was a huge uh, 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 movement across baseball as far as the trading deadline was concerned over the weekend. Braves made some moves as well. I'd like to give – you know, J.J., what your (coughs) thoughts are on uh, a lot of those. Uh, We've seen already some fruit from those uh, moves over the last – this past weekend, although the Braves – did not win the series against Milwaukee. Milwaukee's a really good, uh, really good team. But uh, we'll talk about that. We'll take your call, phone calls, 256-234-6221, uh, and uh, we'll take your comments as well on Facebook. But uh, uh, just go ahead and introduce this question. We'll uh, put it out there, and then we'll come back and talk about it a little bit. But how much – this is question number one – how much competition will there actually be a quarterback? That is the question I think we come into this. Obviously, Bo Nix, T.J. Finley. Uh, you have the freshman, Demetrius Davis, there as well. Those three guys competing for that uh, quarterback spot. Will there actually be a legitimate competition? Brian Harson says yes. Um, what do you think? I'd like to know. And what are your questions for this Auburn football team as we move Toward the beginning of practice, I'd like to know that as well. Brought to you each and every day by Russell Do It Center for all your building supply, home decor tools, whatever it might be. Go and check them out today. We're up against our first break here on the Auburn Blitz, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more right after these messages. Hi, this is Brian Bice with Bice Motors. With our all-star lineup of Dodge trucks, Jeep, SUVs, and Chrysler cars, we offer the area a team dedicated to making your next vehicle purchase a positive experience. Our sales team offers competitive pricing, and we back up all sales with the service department second to none. Bice Motors also offers the area's best selection of pre-owned vehicles. Visit Bice Motors at 2133 Cherokee Road in Alexander City. Hidley Towers is an affordable senior citizen community located in Alexander City on Highway 22 East, where spacious one bedrooms are available now. Great location, peaceful setting, comfortable living, where pets are allowed and utilities are included. Call today to find out more about Alexander City's best kept secret, 256 329 0552, for your family at Hidley Towers. That's 256 329 0552. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA Weekly Show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. Finding a job might be tough, but starting your new career has never been easier. Wellborn Cabinet in Ashland has a wide array of career opportunities with benefits. General labor production, skilled cabinet builders, product assembly line, shipping, over-the-road truck drivers, clerical, marketing, security, daycare, office clerks, and so much more. Apply in person, 38669 Highway 77 South in Ashland, or online at wellborn.com. Building cabinets, building careers, and building our community. 
Whether it's Lake Martin, Lay Lake, or Logan Martin, boaters from all over the state of Alabama come to Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama, because it's worth the drive. With the best deals on unbeatable Suzuki outboards, Manitou and Landau Tritunes, and a great pre-owned inventory while they last. Alex City Marine is the pros the locals know. And no matter where you're from, when you're here, you're local to us. Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama. AlexCityMarine.com. Heritage South Credit Union in Alexander City is your community credit union, and they have been for over 80 years. Heritage South Credit Union proudly serves Tallapoosa, Coosa, Lee, Chambers, Randolph, and Chilton Counties. From checking to business accounts, to share savings, to club accounts, to their kids' club and investments, visit them online at myhscu.com. Heritage South Credit Union, your community credit union for 80 years. Federally insured by NCUA. A&M Plumbing, A&M Plumbing, service at its best when you need it most. From the smallest drippy faucet to drain cleaning to water heater replacement to gas lines to total systems replacement, AM Plumbing handles it all. Visit amplumbing.net today for the experienced, licensed, and insured pros at AM Plumbing. AM Plumbing, AM Plumbing, service at its best when you need it most. Gills Auto Sales in Opelika has 250 pre-owned and low-mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, each with low down payments and low monthly payments. Good credit or bad credit, it doesn't matter. Get pre-approved in seconds with no effect on your credit score. Instant decision with no date of birth or social security number needed. The largest selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs can be found at Gills Auto Sales, 1430 Gateway Drive in Opelika, or at gillsonline.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Auburn Blitz. Andy and JJ here with you for about 45 more minutes in today's show. Again, thank you so much for all of you out there being with us. We're brought to you each and every day by Mortgage Pro. The Eric McKinley team, they are saving people thousands of dollars each and every year on their home mortgage. Give them a call today, 256-397-0248. That's Mortgage Pro, the Eric McKinley team. Looking at five big questions for the Auburn Tigers as they enter fall camp, uh, number one on the list for me, how much competition will there actually be at quarterback? Uh, what do you think? Is that really a question? I mean, if, it depends on how, how, how big of a believer you are in T.J. Finley, I guess. Well, I mean, we, from what we've seen of T.J. Finley and what we've seen of Bo Nix, <clears throat> then no, there won't be much of a competition. Um, there will be lip service to a competition. Uh, for probably about two weeks, and and then it'll be it'll be Bo Nix as the starter. Um, to me, unless unless Bo Nix has has developed some sort of bad relationship with the coaching staff or you know the, the, something going on there outside of football, I don't I don't see how there's much of a competition there. But I think having T.J. Finley will be nice to have someone with an SEC background that can push Bo Nix a little bit and can give you potentially a quality backup. Yeah, I, I don't say this as far as competition as really in determining of who's going to be the starting quarterback. I mean, you know, is there is T.J. Finley good enough, is Davis good enough to actually push him to Davis won't see the field better? this week, this year, I don't think. Yeah. It's, it's a Finley and Nix kind of thing this year. Can he – does Finley do anything to raise the level of the quarterback room to push Bo Nix, to actually, you know – they always say competition, you know, iron sharpens iron, all these different kind of uh, axioms, you know. You, you want competition. You want guys to push the guys to make them better. Can, is that going to happen? Well, the main thing you want, you want T.J. Finley going out there every day intent on winning the job. Because that will force Bo Nix not to be able to take a day off, right? So, uh, not saying that he takes days off at practice. I don't know. I don't watch him practice. Um, but I think the more T.J. Finley pursues the job, 
the more Bo Nix will have to fight him off. And that should make him a more focused and more, you know, uh, prepared quarterback, I would think. I think that's – yeah, that's what I would like to see. That's what I hope uh, happens. Uh, number two, will the defense be better on third down? In 2019, the Auburn defense gave up 29.9% on third down. That's number eight in the country, number two in the SEC. Last year, they gave up 50.3% on third down. Half the time, they could not get off the field on third down. That was 121st. What was the difference, the Andy? And number 14 in the I, that's dead last in the conference. I'm not. I don't really know, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, you you were missing some monster defensive lineman like a Derrick Brown, um, but I, I I don't really I don't really know. I mean, wh- how what makes a defense go from being one of the best in the SEC to the worst in the SEC? It, it, I don't know if it's a mindset, if it's got something. To, I mean, if it's got some luck factor i don't know i mean you know it depends on if you're in a lot of third and longs versus a lot of third and shorts well and that and that may be the the key to the whole thing you may go back and somebody who runs metrics and stuff like that may go back and look at first down defense from those two years and go okay well there's your difference you know instead of first and four or the second and four it was second and nine, you know, and, and there's a difference there. No, so. A big difference there, no, no doubt, because it changes the game plan of the offense. That's know? right. You know, you're, you're passing on second and nine. You're not running on second and nine every time. So, yeah, there's a lot of different factors in there, but nonetheless, that has got to be a focus. If you're going to give up 50% on third down, you're not going to stop very many people. No. And you're not going to win a lot of games. No. To be perfectly honest. So – uh, Auburn got to be better, not just better, but a lot better on third down. I know that's already – I've heard, you know, um, that Derek Mason – uh, yeah, Mason already talk about that being a focus um, for the upcoming season. So, uh, a couple of comments. Uh, Randy says, uh, War Eagle, how is the O-line recruiting? That is a great question. And um, – no, no big time uh, commitments from the off- on the offensive line, but um, it's easy to say, and um, it, it's easy to say, well, you know, this guy's interested in Auburn, and that's fine and good. But until they sign on the dotted line, that doesn't really mean a whole lot. I know Auburn is pursuing one of the best offensive tackles, one of the highest rated, anyway, offensive tackles in the country. He's actually from Washington, from what I understand. So I mean, there was a prior relationship, I'm sure. They were recruiting him at Boise as well. So um, they come down to Auburn, and, and, and at least he's interested enough. That, that tells you how impressed he was with the coaching staff at Boise, I suppose. Um, Tim says, the question on small school recruits is the competition level. Lynette plays Horseshoe Bend. That's all I'm going to say. The last small school player I can think of with some degree of success was Sammy Coates. Um, Sammy Coates was from a 1A, 2A school, and he did – but, well, and there are – the thing is, that's true. It does make for a bigger adjustment period, I think. Uh, but you can't – you can't teach 6'4", 265 with quicks. That, that's – you can't – you know, I don't care who you play against. Um, I mean, Derek Henry played at a little bitty school in Florida, right? But you can't teach 6'4", 235 – you know, with that kind of straight line speed. Hey, you just, you know, there are physical gifts that outweigh the level of competition. Then there are some small school guys who just never, you know, they're never able to make that adjustment to having to go at the level you got to go at every play to compete against athletes your own of your own caliber. Yeah, there's a difference between a six foot, 180 pound linebacker at a 1A school that makes. 200 tackles a year. That's right. That's you right. know, you look at that and say, well, I mean, that's kind of the product of what he, the competition he plays in. But like you say, I mean, if you're – they're physical I mean, guy, translate. Guy I knew, and a, a guy that a, a friend of mine from way, 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 way back in the day um, was a tailback in high school, was recruited to Auburn to play fullback. And, and Reed McMillan uh, was, you know, in the early 90s. 
uh, fullback at Auburn, went on and played in the NFL for a couple of years. And, but, and, and Reed had that sort of thing, right? Small school guy, um, you know, big fish, little pond sort of thing. But he found the right position at Auburn uh, to suit his skills. He was never going to be a halfback at the college level, but you get him up around 235, 240, and he was a heck of a fullback to the level that he could play at the pro level. So um, there are physical gifts that you just can't you can't weigh it. I don't care. I don't care if you're playing at the Y League. You yeah. know, there, there are certain physical gifts you can't overlook. Uh, we get another break here on the Auburn Blitz. We'll be back with more right after these messages. Growing your business isn't just one thing. It's a million little things. Should you lease, rent, or own? How fast can you get that part? Does it fit the budget? That's what your local cat dealer is here for. With expert advice, flexible financing, and industry-leading equipment, you can get the job done day after day. Visit ThompsonCat.com, your compact equipment provider. Grain and Leaf, located at 6068 Highway 63 South, is Lake Martin's premier boutique-style bottle shop with a unique array of sophistication for everyone. Appropriately named for its exclusive selection of top spirits, wine, and craft beer, Grain and Leaf also has a number of fine cigars for you to choose from. They also carry the full line of Hornsby Farms assorted jellies and pottery. Open 10 to 7 Monday through Saturday and noon to 5 on Sundays, Grain and Leaf is your premier shop in the Lake Martin area. First time since 2007. Both the purchase market and the refinance market are extremely strong. While most lenders' turn times have slowed down, we are closing mortgage loans in less than 15 days. At Mortgage Pro, we have closed record numbers in 2019 due to great rates, property values increasing, and exceptional service. If you're looking to buy a home or refinance your current home, call Mortgage Pro today. Mortgage Pro is the way to go. Frontline Outfitters provides all your aftermarket parts for your cars, trucks, and as well as your professional tinning solutions for auto, residential, and commercial buildings. Frontline Outfitters also handles vinyl wraps, spray-in bed liners, truck accessories, LED lighting, paint correction and detailing, and much more. Make sure Frontline Outfitters of Alexander City is your first call for tinning and aftermarket solutions. Call us today, 256-409-8100. The interstate is backed up this morning due to an accident. So you don't like sitting still on the interstate. Get the free Algo traffic app. With Algo, you'll have the information you need to avoid problems on your route, to work, to home, to the beach. Traffic backups, wrecks, lane closures, all with current info and live traffic camera feeds. Know before you go with Algo Traffic, ALGO Traffic, from the Alabama Department of Transportation. Get it today and arrive on time. Lake Martin Garage, located on Highway 280 in Jackson's Gap, has been serving our area since 1993. From routine maintenance such as oil changes, tune-ups, and rotating and balancing your tires, to transmission and engine repair, our trained and certified mechanics will get you back on the road better than before. Need a tow? With a 24-hour, 7-day-a-week towing service, Lake Martin Garage has local and long-range pickup. Trust your vehicle needs to the professionals at Lake Martin Garage. Call 256-825-6139, or better yet, stop in and see them today. Lake Martin Garage. Russell Building Supply and Home Center is just around the corner in a brand new convenient location with a wide selection of grills, hardware, tools, paint, lawn and garden, and much more. The new store offers more home improvement items along with other helpful conveniences like a drive through lumber yard and our best rewards program, making it an ideal destination for do-it-yourselfers and professional contractors. Get ready for game day on the plains by stocking up on all your Auburn tailgating gear at Russell Building Supply and Home Center. EnviroCare is the standard in East Central Alabama for all your pest control and termite needs. EnviroCare exclusively offers Centricon termite colony elimination system that is the industry's most effective termite control to protect your home year round. The EnviroCare team's service is also the standard for our customers. From eliminating home pests to superior termite control, nobody cares like EnviroCare. Serving Lake Martin and East Central Alabama.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Auburn Blitz. Andy and JJ here with you for about 30 more minutes in today's show. Thank you so much for all of you out there being with us. We are brought to you each and every day by Big Fish Real Estate. Get hooked on Big Fish Real Estate for all your real estate needs right here in the Lake Martin area or even down there on the coast as well. So Big Fish Real Estate, they know this area backwards and forwards. They can help you out with anything that you might be looking for. Perhaps you're just wanting to uh, rent out uh, your your Lake Martin home here and for the summer. Uh, that can be a very lucrative thing, and they can help you out with that. They take care of all the details. Uh, Big Fish Real Estate, they do a little bit of everything, and you need to uh, give them a call today or look them up, uh, bigfishlakemartin.com, bigfishlakemartin.com. We're looking at five big questions for the Auburn Tigers as they enter fall camp. Um, number one, how much competition will there be at quarterback? Number two, will the defense be better on third down? They were horrendous last year, giving up 50% on third down. Uh, that's 121st in the country, dead last in the SEC. Uh, the question we continue to ask, how much better, if any, will the offensive line be? Uh, these are three stats. I mean, obviously, the, the offensive line, there's a lot. They're in on every play. If they don't do their job, there is no play that works offensively. But tackles for loss allowed, sacks allowed, and how many rushing yards uh, do you have per game? Auburn, not good last year. Only 162 yards rushing. That was uh, 67th in the country, 7th in the SEC. They gave up almost two sacks a game, about 1.8 and gave up almost five tackles for loss a game, uh, 4.8. So all those were a little worse than the year before, um, except for the uh, tackles for loss. But um, th those are just kind of the obvious ones. But everybody knows what Auburn's offensive line is. They've watched over the last couple of years. You got a new coach. You got a new strength and conditioning. Uh, how much do you think that could make a difference? Uh, it's not, it's not going to change it entirely. You can overcome a lot of that with scheme, though. I mean, you really can. Um, where where you get into trouble if your offensive line is weak is on those third and eights when you need that two and a half, three seconds. That's when you get into trouble. But uh, but if your offense is efficient, you're getting yardage on first down, and you're putting yourself in good situations where you don't have to take a five-step drop on third down, uh, then you can overcome a lot of that with scheme. Um so, you know, that'll be an interesting thing to watch, too. I would expect the numbers to look more like 19 than 20 this year. I would hope. I mean, that, that would be moving in the right direction. You could move up around. I mean, if you're averaging 200 yards rushing a game, I think you're going to be okay. Um, but, again, do the I mean, what, what numbers are we talking about that make the most difference? You were talking about um, – uh, you know, you can uh, change, make a lot of changes or, or make some a lot of improvements through scheme. Is it, I mean, remember, that's the thing, though. Is it rushing yards? Is it yards per carry? Yeah. Um, you know, is it, is it number of sacks per game or per season? Well, if you've or, got an athletic quarterback like Nick's, you, you, your sacks, you ought to not be giving up that many sacks at all. Well, but, but sometimes you take up sacks because an athletic quarterback thinks he can get out of anything, and so he doesn't get rid of the ball on time. Uh, that's overcoming with scheme, right? Mm -hmm. If the quarterback gets rid of the ball on time, you shouldn't take many sacks, you know, but, but you, you got to have a quarterback willing to get rid of the ball on time. Yeah. Um, I, I thought about uh, Bo Nix back there. Um, well, I it, – it's neither here nor there now. But um, it, it, we'll, we'll see, can the offensive line uh, get any better? How much better will it be with Will Friend? Will Friend seems to uh, – everything positive um, that I've heard from uh, – uh, has, has been positive about him from all the offensive linemen. Uh, will the passing game be more efficient? We are trending in the wrong direction since 2017. Now, this passing efficiency rating – uh, there's a lot of different metrics that go into it. It's completion percentage. It's yards per catch. I think it's yards per attempt. It's touchdown passes. It's interceptions. There are all these different metrics that they come in. I, I don't know exactly how they factored in uh, to come up with this number, but 153.59 <coughs> was uh, Jarrett Stidham's uh, team uh, – was the passing efficiency rating for Auburn when he was there in 2017. Auburn won the West that year that was number five 
in the conference, number 13 in the country. It has steadily gone down every year since then. Last, I mean, the last two years we have been 89th in the country. To drop passing your passing efficiency. efficiency 30 points in three years, that's I mean, that's good. pretty – That's a, you know, and that stands out. Probably goes up – part of that goes to your next question, too. I, it's not all quarterback. You know, we put it all quarterback. But part of that goes to your next question. No doubt. Who will step up? At wide receiver, Seth Williams, Anthony Schwartz, Eli Stewart, <clears throat> your top three pass catchers for the last two years. Uh, they And basically, I think in 2020, the next guy was John Samuel Schenker, and he caught nine. See, here's my thought on receiver. I think you've got to have an alpha. Uh, there's got to be, even even if you've got a supremely talented receiving core, right, um, take Alabama a couple of years ago with, with Judy and Waddle and Smith and um, Ruggs. Mm-hmm. Jerry Judy was the alpha. They, you know, it was it was the the ball was designed to go to him first. And, you know, and if somebody else broke open, great, wonderful. Uh, last year, Devonte Smith was the alpha, um, and you've got to. So to me, this may be this may turn out to be a more important question than we probably will give it credit for. I'm a little bit surprised that the leading receiver the last two years has not broken 60 catches in this day and age of college football. Yeah. And that's know. probably one reason. So you can say, well, spread it around, spread it around. No, you, you need an alpha because an alpha draws double teams. And when the alpha draws double teams, everybody benefits. And Anthony Schwartz caught, Anthony Schwartz caught four touchdown passes in right. two years. In two years. That's it. That's that's stunning. Yep. Um, so that got to be something done about that. Uh, we got to take another break. Don't go anywhere. More to come right after this. The biggest party in the South is back. Rock the South, featuring superstars Lou Combs, Miranda Lambert, you can't ride in the little red Leonard Skinner. Nelly, Ashley McBride, Jordan Davis, and more. Rock the South, August 13th and 14th. Tickets on sale now at rockthesouth.com. Tails are wagging and pets are bragging about Zoom to Groom, Columbus, Phoenix City, and Smith Station. Zoom to Groom comes to you. It's mobile pet grooming from the comfort of your driveway. Schedule your appointment now online at zoomtogroom.net or by phone at 334-740-9909. At CNT Electric, our clients are our priority. For the safety and security of your family and home, our technicians are professionally trained, drug tested, background checked, and wear uniforms with name tags. We're proud to have served the Elk City, Dadeville, and Lake Martin areas for the past 10 years. Give us a call at 256-234-0007 for all your electrical service and repair needs. Or visit us on the web at www.cntelectricllc.com and spell out the word and. Attention all women who have been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. In July 2018, a talcum manufacturer was ordered by a Missouri jury to pay $4.7 billion to 22 women who contracted ovarian cancer after use of baby powder and other talc products. The court upheld the record verdict, ruling that substantial evidence was submitted at trial of reprehensible conduct by the manufacturer. Don't wait. Make the call today. Please call 800-939-5681. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce. Because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Now is the best time to sell your current home, as it's a seller's market, meaning that on average you can get up to 96% of your asking price. Who is the most aggressive and most experienced to help you sell your home? Hi, I'm Rhonda Gaskins, broker Century 21 Lake Area Realty in the Lake Martin area. We are getting a 96% return on our listing price, the sales price in this area. Call me today and let me go to work for you. 256-749-3644. 
Two nights, six amazing acts. One weekend at ATL Live. Friday, November 5th, George Strait and Eric Church with Caitlin Smith. Sing a song about the heartland. Saturday, November 6th, Metallica with Cage the Elephant and Greta Van Fleet. ATL Live. Presented by Mercedes EQ. Tales are wagging and pets are bragging about Zoom to Groom. Columbus, Phoenix City, and Smith Station. Zoom to Groom comes to you. It's mobile pet grooming from the comfort of your driveway. Schedule your appointment now online at zoomtogroom.net or by phone at 334-740-9909. Lake Martin has a new car buying experience. It's the TR Group of Alex City on Cherokee Road. The TR Group has up to 100 late model vehicles to choose from and will not be beat on price, selection, or financing. With the TR Group your selection and quality is easy and your good credit is rewarded but we offer guaranteed financing on our inventory because your future is more important than your past the tr group lake martin's new standard in auto sales located at 814 cherokee road alex city usa Welcome back, everyone, to the Auburn Blitz. Andy and JJ here with you. Only a couple of more segments left in today's show. Give us a call, 256-234-6221, or dial us up on the Sports Blitz Facebook page and comment away. We were talking about the five big questions uh, facing Auburn going into fall camp. Uh, we were talking about the receivers, just to kind of um, clarify what I was saying and, and talk about some of the other guys uh, 145 catches for Seth Williams, Anthony Schwartz, and Eli Stove in 2020. 137 in 2019. And that is a lot of – we already talked about the, the numbers weren't – the passing game wasn't nearly as efficient as it needed to be. Uh, but that's the production that you lose. You got the transfer from Georgia, Demetrius Rob Robertson. You got sophomore Cody Hud Kobe Hudson, sophomore Elijah Canyon, sophomore – Javarius Johnson, sophomore Malcolm Johnson, sophomore Xavier Capers, the two seniors, Cedric Jackson and Kalen Newton, and a redshirt freshman, J.J. Evans. So there's a lot of young guys there that haven't proved themselves, but they were all, most of them, most all of those were four-star guys. Um, Robertson was a five-star guy coming out of high school. So there is some talent there, but like J.J. said, somebody's got to step up and be the – be the go-to guy. Be yeah, if, if there's not one guy in the receiving core that I really have to worry about, then I can balance the secondary out and I can, you know, and I can play any coverage I want to at that point. Yeah. But if I've got one guy, at least one guy, that I know if I'm if I get caught in the wrong coverage, he may go 80 yards. You know, then then I've got to really dial the defense down on him. And then that opens up opportunities for for the offense. So I think it may be, like I said, maybe a more important thing that even we're giving it credit for is can someone emerge as a as a big time threat, a guy that a guy that might catch eighty balls this year. You yeah. know. Very unbalanced in the way the receivers were used previously. The most productive receiver, uh, returning receiver is Tank Bigsby. I, I think that's probably uh, a good thing. And uh, the tight end is going to be used more. They they we've been he hearing that. For about five years now, the new coaching staff, um, they've got, uh, I think, five tight ends on the, on the roster. So, uh, if they don't use them, it's an incredibly waste. Uh, throw to the running backs as well. How are we going to throw more to the running backs out of the backfield? We'll, we'll see uh, what this offense looks like from Mike Bobo and Brian Harson. Uh, the Braves now 52 and 54, shocking again. Uh, they're close to 500, JJ. If you can't go six and three in this next nine and get over 500, stop, stop saying that. No, I'm serious. What do you? I mean, you got three at the Cardinals and then six at home, three with the Nats and three with the Reds. You telling me you can't take six of those? I'm telling you. You they take can. six of those. You I'm come telling out, you they'll go five and. And you, you take six of those, you come out 58, 57, and then the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. Uh, well, the Braves made some acquisitions. 
They traded uh, catcher Alex Jackson for uh, Adam Duvall again. Adam Duvall back with the Braves. Um, he, I think he's got over 20 home runs, so he's having a, a, a pretty good year. Um, they got right fielder Jorge Solar um, for Casey Kalich, a right-handed pitcher. Picked up right-handed pitcher Richard Rodriguez from the Pirates for Bryce Wilson and Ricky <coughs> DeVito. This, uh, yeah, and then um, you failed to mention that. Eddie Rosario. Yeah. Um, for old Pablo The Kung Sandoval. Fu Panda. And some cash, apparently. Yeah, I, uh, well, this was the ultimate middling move. It was the ultimate, like, okay, can we, can we, maybe we can do a little something, but we're not going all in on it. Yeah. Because none of those people they gave up are in the Braves' long-term plans. Um, Alex Jackson a couple of years ago was – Bryce that has Wilson not just, worked it's out. Not gonna, it's just not going to work. It, it, yeah. It's a, what's the old line from Office Space? Not going not gonna, not gonna, not gonna to work here anymore. Yeah. Um, Great playoff uh, series last year. Yeah. But it's just not going to happen. So, you didn't give up any of your really prospects that you're counting on for the next year or two. Um, you didn't give up any of the players that might help you win a division this year. The division's still within reach, right? So... I mean, you know, you win a division, you're going to the playoffs. Yeah. Ahead of somebody who's probably going to have 25 more wins than you. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the shocking thing. Everybody came into this season saying, man, the East could be one of the best divisions in the National League, if not baseball. And they're one of the worst yeah. record-wise. It's, it's really kind of, I mean, top to bottom. It, yeah, they, they, the NL East is now the NFC East. It really uh, Braves released Enciarte, Ender Enciarte, probably about time. I saw somebody that was upset about that on, on, I guess, Facebook or Twitter or somewhere. They were like, hey, I missed this. The Braves released Ender. Man, that really makes me mad. I'm like, it makes you mad that a 189 hitter could, you know, I mean, yeah. whatever. He's a, so, yeah. He, if, yeah he's, I'm, I'm okay with that move, Braves management. Yeah, I think I'm okay. He might as well have traded uh, Mendoza, right? Yeah. Uh, Braves send Travis Darno to a rehab stint as well as uh, Enoa, uh, one to Gwinnett, one to Rome. So maybe those guys going to have another. Uh, those, those, those could be huge reacquisitions if you get them. I mean, Travis Darno gives you a. A veteran, reliable bat who hits fastballs really well. And you know, it was having a great year before he, you know, stupidly punched a bench in the dugout. Stupidly. Yeah. Stupidly. Uh, I heard that they were going, they were tempted to, or I saw some uh, on uh, Facebook, I think, that they were uh, considering a trade of Kevin Smith for a box of donuts and a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Well, it didn't happen. You, you, you'd have to pick one. Yeah. Either the donuts or the coffee. You're not getting both. So so when Darno comes back, does that mean vote is gone or does that mean uh, Kevin Smith is gone? I would have to think Kevin Smith is gone. Okay. Uh, and then Sean Newcomb and Orlando Arcia optioned to Gwinnett. Is Sean Newcomb done? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was worth a shot when, when they got it. Arizona, right? Was it Arizona? That they got him from in the well, maybe uh, so I don't know I think it was Arizona um, that they got anyway it was worth a shot big strong left-handed starter you know you, you you take a shot you hope that but it just it's not it, like he says just not working out it's just not working yeah uh, how many how many times has he been optioned now you, you can only option like three times can't you yeah and I think you you know be option to AutoZone for, next week maybe so. so. Uh, all right, uh, we got to take another break here, but we'll be back with one final segment of the Auburn Blitz on this Monday right after this. Grain and Leaf, located at 6068 Highway 63 South, is Lake Martin's premier boutique-style bottle shop with a unique array of sophistication for everyone. Appropriately named for its exclusive selection of top spirits, wine, and craft beer, Grain and Leaf also has a number of fine cigars for you to choose from. They also carry the full line of Hornsby Farms assorted jellies and pottery. Open 10 to 7 Monday through Saturday and noon to 5 on Sundays, Grain and Leaf is your premier shop in the Lake Martin area. Folks around these parts have known for a long time that Walls Tire, just a mile past the bridge on Highway 280, is your number one stop for automotive service and repair. 
At Wallace Tire, you'll always find quality service at a fair price on everything from AC, name brand tires, big or small repairs, routine maintenance, towing, and more. When your car or truck needs to run right, there's one place in the area to go. Conveniently located and easy to find. Wallace Tire, just a mile past the bridge on Highway 280. Russell DeWitt Center and Building Supply Stores have the tools and materials to get the job done right, whether you're a professional contractor or just a weekend do-it-yourselfer. With everyday customer conveniences like a drive through lumber yard, price match promise, and our best rewards program, each of our nine locations offer top brands and building materials like lumber, hardware, tools, paint, lawn and garden, and much more. Visit today and see what Russell DeWitt Center and Building Supply can help you build tomorrow. EnviroCare is the standard in East Central Alabama for all your pest control and termite needs. EnviroCare exclusively offers Centricon Termite Colony Elimination System that is the industry's most effective termite control to protect your home year-round. The EnviroCare team's service is also the standard for our customers. From eliminating home pests to superior termite control, nobody cares like EnviroCare. Serving Lake Martin and East Central Alabama. Sign Source is your local vendor for commercial and residential sign manufacturing and installation. We offer all kinds of lighted and non-lighted signage from retail signs, LED message centers, event banners, vehicle wraps, the whole spectrum. We also offer service and repair on existing signs as well as retrofitting to LED or installation of outsourced signage. We have the knowledge necessary to fulfill all of your signage needs in the short or long term. Visit SignSourceNow.com to get started. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA weekly show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. Need that boost to get you started in the morning or help get you through a long day at the office? Alex City Nutrition is your answer. Alex City Nutrition, located on 2nd Broad Street in downtown Alex City, offers meal replacement shakes, post-workout shakes, extreme rebuild products, and a vast array of loaded teas that offer focus, energy, and build up your immunity and overall health. Want to buy in bulk? We now offer your favorite flavors by the gallon. Come by Alex City Nutrition today or call 256-496-8284 to begin your journey to great health. Playing with rockets is great when you're a kid. But when it's time to get a mortgage, you quickly realize that a rocket is complicated and expensive. It's best to work with an independent mortgage broker instead. They're dedicated to getting you a home loan faster and more affordably. And they're more than just mortgage experts. They live right in your own neighborhood, so you don't have to go it alone. For mortgages that are faster, easier, and more affordable, find a local independent mortgage broker near you. Growing your business isn't just one thing, it's a million little things. Should you lease, rent, or own? How fast can you get that part? Does it fit the budget? That's what your local cat dealer is here for. With expert advice, flexible financing, and industry-leading equipment, you can get the job done day after day. Visit ThompsonCat.com, your compact equipment provider. Welcome back, everyone, to the final segment of the Auburn Blitz. Uh, Andy and JJ taking you up to 1 o'clock here today. On this day, 1907, Hall of Famer Walter Johnson began his 21-year baseball career at the age of 19 with a 3-2 loss to the Detroit Tigers. So, hey, he turned it around after that. And in 1907, I'm quite sure he pitched every inning. I have no doubt he yeah. pitched every inning. And probably threw about 300 pitches. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, 1921, after – a lot of people don't really realize this, but after three hours of deliberation, a Chicago jury acquits 
a eight uh, the eight Chicago White Sox that were accused of throwing the World Series in the quote black uh, quote unquote Black Sox scandal. The next day, they are all banned from organized baseball for life. Yeah, they were never going to get convicted by a jury of Chicago fans. No, probably not. No. no. Uh, not of their peers. 1973, on this day, Hall of Famer George Brett gets his first major league hit in his debut for the Royals. He One of my favorite on. players growing up. I always liked George Brett. I, I mean, consummate hitter. Yep. With a professional ball player, they'll, you know, they'll – Tagline and he, yeah, I did it. Uh, always enjoy uh, watching him. He, I mean, the dude got up to, I think he hit 390 one year. Yeah. Um, he came close. I think he hit three, maybe 80 something one other year. Uh, he was a phenomenal hitter. Ended up with over 3,000 hits, of course. Happy birthday today, Bill Scott, born on this day, 1920. Bill Scott. The voice of Bullwinkle. Gotcha. Hello. No, I would never know that. Uh, and Mr. Peabody. That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, Carol O'Connor. Fabulous actor. Wonderful. I loved In the Heat of the Night, loved Archie, Bun- Archie Bunker. Yeah. I mean, and that's so different. Just about everything Carol O'Connor ever did was just fabulous. I, I would agree. 1924, uh, died in 2001. Peter O'Toole, one a uh, great British actor. Yeah, another great actor. Uh, 1932, Lamar Hunt. Owner of the State. Kansas City Chiefs. The Lamar Hunt Trophy, the AFC Championship. I right? worked for his niece at one time. Really? Yes. Doing what? A niece of his. Radio. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. She heard her husband had bought a radio station. Wow. Where? Selma, Alabama. Okay. Yes. Uh, Billy Cannon. Heisman winner, 1959. The Galloping Ghost. Went on to, uh, I think, a BNB, or maybe MVP type in the NFL. If you've never seen Everybody's All-American, the, the old movie with Dennis Quaid and uh, Jessica um, Lang. Lang. Um, watch it. It's kind of loosely based on Cannon. It's not a it's not a biopic of, of Billy Cannon, but it's loosely based on Billy Cannon's career, and it is really, really fabulous. Mm. Uh, Garth Hudson from the band. Oh, okay. Uh, keyboardist. Keyboardist, yeah. Uh, Canadian keyboardist. Uh, 1937. Wes Craven. Uh, zombie movies. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. And yeah, Scream. Yeah, yeah. And the Scream. Scream okay. Uh, 1939 was Butch Patrick, born on this day, 1953. Nope. Eddie Munster. Okay. Jimmy Lowe, uh, born on this day, 1955. If I die before I wake, feed Jake. He's uh, been a good okay. dog. Okay. All right. <laughs> Victoria Jackson. Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. And for some reason, I want to say she went to Auburn. You know, I, I think I you may be right. She went to there, there may be. I think you may be absolutely right. Uh, but she, dingy, a ditzy blonde of that kind of yeah. uh, humor. Uh, she was actually pretty funny. 1959. Ed West, tight end. I think yep. he played at Auburn as well. Went on to the NFL bo- uh, from Colbert County. The Alabama. pride of Colbert County, Alabama. 1961. Mary Louise Parker, born on this day, 1964. She was in Weeds. If you, yep. I don't know if you remember that program. Uh, she was in um, she's in the Red movies with Bruce Willis. Okay. Uh, and Fried Green Tomatoes as well. Yes. Um, Tim Wakefield, knuckleball. knuckleballer. Knuckleballer, yes. Knuckleball, yeah. Reinvented himself and became a knuckleball pitcher. Sam Worthington. Actor, right? Actor. He was in uh, the uh, uh, Avatar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has okay. made a billion gotcha. dollars off that. Um, Eddie Furlong played uh, John Connor from Terminator 2. Oh. Kid. Uh, 1977. Probably ruined his life. I don't know. Uh, he hasn't done much since. <laughs> well, the character was a bit of a misfit. He was a bit of a misfit. That is true. And Kristaps Porzingis, center for the Knicks. He was with the Knicks, and then he got gotcha. traded, I think. I don't know. Uh, 1995. I don't know. I don't keep 95. up with the NBA much anymore. Yeah, but that, that's kind of – whenever I see that, somebody born, yeah. born in the 90s, 95. I always think, good grief, he was born after I graduated high school. My alarm clock's older than he is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that uh, when, yeah, is that what 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 do you consider when you start saying?
Is it Mr. Booker was born in the 80s? I don't know. I, you know, 80s, I still, you know, I'm still kind of, you know, I'm down, down in there, but it's like when you get, when you get past about 91, and I think it probably has something to do with, you know, I, I graduated from college in 93. Okay. So I think if you were born in those years when I was like grown man out on his own, you know, getting married, doing stuff, buying a house, all that, then I'm like... How are they old enough to do that? You know, yeah. You don't realize how long it's been. You should, uh, what are you even doing? Here? Why, why are you here? Why are yeah, you here? exactly. Uh, I would agree. All right. That's going to pretty much wrap it up for us on this edition of the Auburn Blitz. Thank you so much for all of you out there being with us. We are back on the air tomorrow, same time, same channel. Brett and Randy will be with you then for Jeremy Jeffcoat. I am Andy Grant. So long for now, everybody. We'll talk again soon.